Probably. You're a, you're a lead guitar player. Yeah. You're not a bass player. You well, should be out front. I, I was. I was. Have you heard? Are you are you up to uh, you're up, to, up speed? to speed? Well, no. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I I heard that. Uh, yeah. I guess we got to cover that. People are are uh, are, are freaked out. <laughs> Things are are buzzing. You're you're out of the Chili Peppers. Well, yeah. When this was this was booked before before that. that. Yeah. And and then someone like the day after booked we booked it like uh, we, you know what's going on. With the Chili Peppers, you know, for Shante's back, you got to interview him. And then I'm like, I got Josh coming. <laughs> some of you will get some answers because I just saw you guys at that benefit I host at, yes. the, at Flea's uh, Music Which Conservatory. A, f- a few of what happened? Was this? Uh, did you see it? Was it? Did you know it was happening? No, not at all. Come on, man! No, complete, uh, complete surprise. But, I mean, no, complete shock, but not a surprise. I but guess. you're friends with John Frusciante, right? I was. We hadn't oh. spoken much since I joined the band. We'd sort of. Nah, really? Yeah, at all, really. I hadn't spoken to him in in ten years or so until uh, Flea got married in October. We 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 spoke briefly. But wait, okay. So now, but you guys, well, maybe we should go back. So you you got blindsided by this thing, yeah, and now you're out of the gig, yeah. And you just you got no explanations. What did? Well, the ex- I mean, it's pretty simple, and it's yeah. there's no uh, there's no animosity. I mean, the the uh, the explanation is that John is. Uh, would like to come back and is is sort of re- rekindled a relationship with the band or with Flea musically and yeah. for the last little while and behind they, your back I suppose you know I mean they I, were jamming somewhere yeah yeah but uh but um yeah the the moment they told me I I told I said to them I wasn't surprised by this you know it sort of crossed my mind once or twice when well, I when well, yeah go when ahead. it was just when I heard that you know their John and Flea had hung out or oh. you know I didn't know they'd been playing or anything yeah. But um, the uh, I I I just in that moment they told me I sort of had this this uh, this great sort of wave of Uh-oh. of love for them yeah and love for everything I was able to do with them and yeah. I sort of you know I put up a, a barrier between that feeling and anything that might come beyond that point oh, you okay. know or any change right. that my life right. might so go you, through or you anything stayed like in that. the gratitude. Yeah, and you you know I hate sounding like that. Normally, I it's it's not easy for me to spe- right. speak of all that stuff. But I uh, but that's that's where I uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm living. Well, and, that, it's, and it feels really good. Well, how long were you with them? Ten years. It was a perfect sort of decade. It was yeah, like October of '09 till December of. So when this year. when you took the gig, I mean, we can go through the history of it because you did several records with Frusciante, right? When he left. Yeah. And, and no, well, well, no. When he was in, when he okay. So you did his solo projects when he was with the Peppers. Yeah, and but like he's on how many? You did one studio record with them or two? Two, two studio records. Two, two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, two. And then I brought you one actually. There's a um, there's a whole collection of of extra stuff we did for the first record I okay. made with them. All right, well, I listened to some of your solo records. I listened to a uh, Dot Hacker. Uh, work and play, right? That, that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great records. Thank you. And I listened to another record. I can't. I'm, I'll figure out which one. But, but you know, you go back to, in this LA scene for a long time. But I just, I wonder. What, so when you joined the Peppers, was for Shante? Did that strain your relationship? Is that where? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, but uh, the thing was, we we had been friends and we were working together and. Uh, we uh when they decided after a long break that they wanted to carry on and he maintained that he was sort of done with it for for the for that you know yeah. for, at the at that moment um and they asked me to do it i think he was just a little surprised that they were going to carry on without him and then i was sort of talking to him as his friend about the fact that the band was carrying yeah. on but they had asked me so it was sort of a strange a strange position I was holding. Well, that's interesting that somehow you were the logical step. I mean, you're no, you're a Strat guy. They seem to like Strat guys in that position. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of, <laughs> I, I, I assume the role that I'm given. Yeah. yeah is, that, it, is that what it is? I, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I kind of, it's funny. Like, I'm, I figured, you know, I was trying not to have this conversation with my steering wheel. Yeah. You know, oh, right. Way over here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, as a guitarist, I, I sort of became one all of a sudden when I started playing with Bob Forrest when I was younger. You know? well, is it still? Like that last record he did was sort of really dark and, and fucked up. And, you know, that song about not being able to eat his favorite cereal anymore. Is yeah, that's like, the one. That, yeah, that's on the Bicycle Thief album. That one's on there? Yeah. Because he did an acoustic version of it on the last album. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. 
uh, and and John Frusciante does a solo on that album with me, uh-huh. and that's sort of right after I had met him. And so Frusciante is is he in the Peppers then? When I met Bob and started playing with Bob and kind yeah. of joining the group of people, the greater group of people that have been around playing, John was not yet in the band. He was just sort of reemerging from a dark period it, where he wasn't in the band. But he had been in the band before? Yeah, in 89, 88, 89, 90. 90. Right, and then he disappeared into a heroin hole? Yeah, uh, eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, Whatever. Uh, yeah, the, it, the void. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he left the band in 91, uh, 92. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so he, he rejoined the Chili Peppers, you know, a couple, a year or so after I started playing with Bob. And yeah, he, you know, be, I think maybe, maybe even before the Chili Pepper album, Californication came out, John and I had be, started becoming friends and he came and played that solo and with yeah, Bob, we just started you, hanging so, out all the and time. And you were playing with Bob? Yeah. And he claimed to play the solo and then you guys started hanging out? Started hanging out. I had become pretty obsessed with his first solo album. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was um, put out in 94. What was it? Which one was that? It's called uh, Neandre Ledes. Yeah, yeah. And usually just a t-shirt. It's kind of two things together. Did he, um, was so, you know, he was sort of a, you liked the way he played. You liked I loved the way he played. I loved the way he wrote songs. I loved yeah. the way he sang. That, that record is sort of, it's funny because I just, I, I came across uh, something and I, it, recently where he, he had said something like uh, that that album was never meant to be released. So it's just, it was just sort of a demo yeah. of, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, what, uh, what about that record was so like Well, incredible. just that, I think it was just made for for no one to hear. Or, uh-huh. you know, it was just sort of made for, you know, sort of a, a pure audience of of him, of himself or, you know, people he knew. So, and, yeah, you know, there's a, and what was it like, what, what was it about the way he played that was like so fucking uh, like compelling to you? Because he was sort of a you know, like he got out there. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he was. Um, he's just. He just has an incredible, in, inherent sort of sound that comes from his fingers and just. And, and he's, but right? he's very. He's he's very skilled and very. Uh, you know, he's he's a student of the guitar and yeah. he, he knows how to. Um, you know, he, he he created a sound of his own, you right? Know, taking a lot from, you know, all the the amazing guitar players. But isn't isn't weird that how somebody can to. like like take like. Like it doesn't matter how fast or what you know people know for them to be to have their own sound. I was just talking about that to about that to someone the other day that because we were talking about John Merrick because I went to see um, Dead and Company because my brother wanted to see him so I, I got us hooked up and I don't know who he is as a guitar player you, you know but he's a great guitar player but I I don't know exactly what his tone is or what his sound is but there are some people that are much less. They have much less virtuosity, who I can identify immediately, right? Yeah, because of their tone and their feel. Yeah, that's something I, you know, I. So I, I, I would say I play like someone who didn't grow up playing guitar, and I just sort of figured it out as I went along, and I always felt like I was playing catch up, right? And, and playing with Bob, and you know, just I guess influences coming out in my playing, but. I'm trying to let me. No, I think you have a singular sound. I think that, like, what you're are you saying that, like, you know, because, you know, there there wasn't a lot of, uh, of, um, like, you didn't. A lot of people spend time um, mimicking people. Yeah, or just learning actual. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never did that finger exercises and scales. Did and stuff. you? I just no, not at all. I just you know played songs, and then I you know I played with Bob until I was probably about twenty. 21 and well, on the road how many records did he do we just did the one but yeah. um being friends with the chili peppers we did two opening tours for them as the first of three one was with foo fighters one was with stone temple pilots really yeah just sort of on that californication tour when they were hitting it hard and going yeah. every corner of the country and you did like a lot of dates yeah we did two three week legs so you really get your full immersion full immersion which is why when i ultimately joined later on it was sort of Everything felt kind of natural. I've known everyone in their touring family for years. Right, you weren't a new uh, entity. I you knew how it worked. Right, and but but like that that first spot, that's kind of a rough spot. People are trickling in. Yeah, no, no one gives a fuck. Yeah, but you know, it's still for me. I'm twenty, twenty one, and I just I barely look out at the crowd anyway. I know all that. I know people are getting their beers yeah. and finding their seats, but you know, just that opportunity to do that. And so the relationship with John, though, was he, like, showing you shit? Um, I, I wouldn't, no, I mean, not specifically showing me shit, but just through, you know, the relationship we were building as friends. I mean, he and was hugely in, influential, just 
you know, on, on many levels. Is he older than you? Yeah, he's nine years older than me. He so he grew, when he joined the Chili Peppers, he was sort of the ten year younger than them group. Right. And then I'm the ten year younger than him group, or nine years. So right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm eighteen years younger than the other Chili Peppers. Are you? Like I thought. So they're a little older than me. Like I thought they're around my. I'm fifty six. So they're in yeah, that they're, zone. Same. Yeah, they were born in sixty two, sixty three. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm seventy nine. Wow. So how so then how does it evolve though that you so you tour with them but you don't and then you go out and do your own thing? Well, my own thing. I, so having the dream of always being in a band and yeah. sort of starting starting the thing with Bob, but it wasn't a band so much. It was he and I, and then we got a couple guys to help yeah. play it live. But when I stopped playing with Bob, that would have been the moment to start something, right. something like that. And then and that was you know right at the beginning of my twenties, and I just sort of spent my whole twenties yeah. touring with other bands, amazing bands. Chili Peppers were on tour. Yeah. I had a suspended driver's license and <laughs> Frashante was living at the at the Chateau Marmont. Yeah. And, but he, he, he wasn't checking out because it would have been too much of you know, to, to come back and find somewhere new. So I, I stayed there for for two and a half weeks and recorded basically an album there. With him? No, on my own. Yeah. Because I had nowhere to go. At the and Chateau? I, yeah. Because I had nowhere to go and I just had my cassette eight track and no license. So I stayed up you know, just recording all night yeah. and just made basically a record and and uh you know, but no one ever re- no one ever heard it and then at the end of that stay there, um Gibby Haynes had called Bob maybe and <laughs> called John <laughs> yeah. or you know and said, "You know, we need a guy, we need a guitar player who can also play drums." So I went out with the with, with the, the butthole surfers? Yeah, for a month and a half. That must have been crazy. Yeah. Now, I have to assume that you're picking up things. Like, the, you know, this is part of the evolution of your sound. I mean, because, like, how big is the, uh, the pedal board at that point? <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it usually was just as big as it had to be to do what I was doing. <laughs> now, now it's pretty big, right? It is big, yeah. But if you look at, uh, you know, when I joined the Chili Peppers, I, I, uh, John's was pretty big when he left. So I, I was kind of doing what I, you know, I was yeah. covering my bases. I have such a, I have such a, a aversion to any of the modern jiggery pokery that that you can do with live, you know, like uh, amp modelers or MIDI effects or anything. So, you know, what do they do? What those things? Yeah. Well, they allow you to have lots of sounds with very little gear. Oh, you and like not, to you like to have the thing that does the one thing. Yeah, and and you know, tap dance all over it and right. smash it, and yeah. you know, unplug the power and look at your guitar tech and watch him come out and try and fix it. Yeah, in front of a lot I've of seen people. you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you get pretty athletic with the pedal board. Yeah. Okay, so after Beck, then you're you're like you're playing with John. Yeah, in that period, yeah, yeah, we had started making records together. We would hang out um, anytime he was off. How'd you not get fucked up on drugs? Well, none of those people were at that time. They were all sober. Yeah, and also, you know, I, I, I had my period a little later, but um, oh, you did, but not that bad. And I mean, yeah. like, you know, doing heroin and doing that kind of stuff. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, it's funny the stories we tell ourselves about what's acceptable and what's not. But <laughs> so I mean, so you just did heroin socially. Well, not that. No, no, I, no. I never went there. But oh, uh, you know, it's just it felt a little ridiculous to be younger, right. see what happens, right, and and go. I'm that's good for me. But having said that, other things right, you sure, know, you yeah, yeah, dive yeah. right in. But you were able, yeah. I guess you know by certainly having a relationship with Bob and seeing the the sort of uh, the destruction it reaped on you, you know those bands that scene got you know, like kind of leveled with that shit. Yeah, but everybody got sober, man. Yeah, I mean the ones who yeah the ones, the ones who were alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're playing with John. And you're you're doing these you know his trippy records. Yeah, well we were we were hanging out all the time, yeah. kind of listening to records, practicing vocal harmonies, and just kind of being friends. And and uh, we we decided to make a record together, and it sort of turned into his solo album, Shadows Collide with People, because uh, that that was um, the group of songs he had written all, at that time. Uh, we just we we started, and I was playing drums, and we had done a lot of demos. Yeah, and. Uh, it uh, it was the first time I'd ever really recorded drums in a proper, you know, studio situation, yeah. and it was so much for me to handle. I barely played drums anymore at this point. Right. So we called Chad in, Chad Smith, to the rescue, and then this freed me up to play bass. And then all of a sudden, we were tracking as a three piece, and that's how that record came about. Uh, the The Shadows Collide with People album, and it, we had a great time doing that. How good are you on bass? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I can, I can do it. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. 
It was, but you never. But it wasn't your instrument. Well, the no, it wasn't my instrument. But I love playing bass. And the next touring gig that I had yeah. was initially sold to me as uh, I would be the bass player. Right. And it was P- with PJ Harvey. And I get a call from her, another answering machine message. Wait, how'd she find you? She so- found me through Vincent Gallo. Well, did you hang out with Vincent? Did you play? Yeah, I played with him, and that was through Frusciante. They'd become friends. They worked together. Him Vincent, and Gallo. Yeah, he did a video f- uh, with John for for a s- song. Like hey, Gallo was this guy that was just around all the time and was like, you know, he was this sort of barometer of some sort of cool. So I'm on tour with Sparks. We're in London on, yeah. on a layover on our way to Russia. Yeah, and I go see my friend Brian Danger Mouse Brian and right. I had become chummy with some of the guys when I did the fill in a yeah. few months before and the keyboard player whispers in my ear you know I, I left the band today I'm, I'm not I don't do it anymore and then 10 minutes later Brian says yeah the keyboard you know my yeah. name he said left the band today so I think there was an open bar that night and I said I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember flying. We flew to Russia the next morning. I remember walking around. It was crazy. The World Cup was going on. And I'm in Ru- St. Petersburg. But you don't play keyboard, do you? You do. And so, yeah. So <laughs> I told myself that when I, I, I asked myself what I had said the night before. So I figured it out. And, yeah. I, and the guy who had done it prior to me was an incredible player. So you just figured out the riffs and for yeah. the songs. And yeah. they, I mean, I know how to play keyboards enough. I know how to play chords, and I, you know, I actually write on piano a lot these days. Yeah. And um, but you know, I'm not a right. Uh, I get it. Yeah, keyboard. yeah, yeah. So you're doing all this stuff, and you're still kind of hanging out with John. And so when? How does the? I guess we're getting close to the peppers. We're aren't getting we? close. We're getting close. Yeah, because Gnarls Barkley is what led to. So so Gnarls, yeah. you know, being maybe not through label, whatever. They they get um, they start opening for the Chili Peppers in the Stadium Arcadium period. Oh, yeah. And this is great for me because I'm friends with them and I know their tour, everyone on So, so everyone's hanging out. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, you know, I'm right. in there. And uh, how did that happen? There was a cancellation because of a snowstorm. So there was a makeup show on one of the legs and Gnarls decided at the last minute not to go down to Mexico. Yeah. But because I'm friends with the Chili Peppers, I was right. like, you guys are crazy. Mexico City is the greatest place to play. Is it? Fuck you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with them. I just, yeah. You know, it's the best. So I, Just to we, hang out? Yeah. So I go, and I hadn't seen John in a while or, um, because I'd been on tour and stuff. Yeah. So we hung out. It was fun. Played. Then they had to make up the show in Oklahoma City that had been snowed at the beginning, but Gnarls isn't here anymore, so they had another person open the show. But I'm hanging out, nothing to do. So I play on stage with them because they, at the time, on the Stadium Arcadium album, yeah. there was lots of extra guitar, lots of overdubs John right. was doing. Yeah. And... You know, I, so there were songs that they couldn't really play because there was too much to cover for him alone. So I played a song or two that night, a yeah. song, I think. And, um, yeah, on the flight home from that, uh, I think that was the first time I had flown in to Van Nuys Airport, which is right where I grew Private up. Private plane? Yeah. Yeah. So on the plane home, someone had come up with the idea, maybe, I don't know, maybe Chad, to yeah. ask me to come out on the rest of the tour because... It was fun, I, yeah. you know. Maybe my my demeanor lightened the lightened yeah. the mood a bit. I don't yeah. know, but um, yeah. And then I was able to. So you to, did that to cover the extra guitar parts, do some background vocals, play some keys. So yeah, so I, so that's 2007. So I went out with them the rest of their tour, 07. You know, through the the end of it. Yeah. And after they finished that tour, they had a very clear two year hiatus, and you know they said to everyone that works with them don't don't even don't talk to us we're really putting it on we're yeah. shutting it down for two years so and they I, honored that they did yeah flea went to music school you know anthony was a new dad at the time john was always you know making music and uh they um at chad started another band he went on a whole tour in that period so yeah two years nothing and then as that two-year period came to a close you know the other guys were like all right and I, john still wasn't up for up for getting back in and doing it because so he was into when, his own shit. Yeah, and he was, you know, again, he's uh, he he's one of the you know most amazing. He has one of the most amazing work ethics, and yeah. he's incredible uh, like that. So, yeah, he was doing tons of great music, and um, they but they they weren't done, and they wanted to keep going. And I, you know, I was there, and that that so that's that's when that started, and that was oh nine, July twentieth. 
is when Flea asked me. Then we still had, they were still kind of tying up some, some vacations and stuff. And right. October, right after I turned 30, is when we played for the first time. And, th- and it was in crazy. In rehearsal space? Yeah, in, a, in the alley out in the valley. Yeah. Which, um, which is where they had written Blood Sugar, I think. Right. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. All of a sudden, I'm, you know, in this band. Were you, I, what is it? Were you putting together a touring set? No, I was joined, I joined as a, as a full time member and a writer and right, and, so they were working on new material. Yeah, because they okay. had, they were shut down for two years. Yeah, so it was new album time, and you know I I, I hadn't been playing guitar much. Like I'd been t- doing keyboards and Narls Barkley. Or I was writing songs on piano. I was messing around with synthesizers, playing drums, playing a little guitar. And had always. you done any of your own solo albums yet? Nothing. So working with those guys, I mean, being in that band because you were in that band. Um, did you feel that? You were able to sort of carve out your own trip. I mean, they've had several guitarists, but did you feel like you know you were able to leave your mark on that guy, that band? I I hope so. I was when I noticed when you play with them, the, only the couple of few songs I saw you do, and they were songs generally that you know were recorded. You didn't record with them, yeah. But it, you sound like yourself. That's good. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's the thing I was sort of unaware of the whole time. You know, I don't. I learned. I never read the internet anyway. But the beginning. You know, the first tour I did with them, I'm sure there was lots of people talking about, you know, comparing me yeah, to yeah, John yeah, yeah. and all this. And, you know, I think I spent probably far too much time thinking about that. And, you know, I, I did all these tours in my 20s and never able to really develop my own style and play right. other people's stuff. But I play like I play and, you know, I learn from who I learned from or I, you know, I learned by playing along to what I learned to play along to. So I, there's got to be, an, you know, a style there. Sure. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, but again, now I'm in the Chili Peppers, I'm playing the songs that have, they're, you know, they're, been, yeah, they're, you know, recorded anthems, and famous the world yeah, over. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to be respectful and yeah. I'm, but I'm trying to, I, I can't help but just be me. Right. And, you know, so hopefully if, if this, uh, change, you know, John coming back and, you know, me leaving had happened five years ago, half my time in, it probably would have destroyed me right because <laughs> it would have confirmed all the things that my mind that you to that, tell me that i suck and yeah, i'm yeah. worthless and yeah. all those things but you know i think now i've done two uh, we were we were you know, over a year into writing a thir- another album and uh, so i've i've done a lot of writing with them i've done so there's work that hasn't been recorded yet that you, yeah that's oh. just gonna go away i guess Wow. Which is, you know, that kind so of... So they liked writing with you. Obviously, you know, you guys were doing stuff. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, you know, it's a it's a funny thing. I think it was it was all positive. It comes down to the history that, uh, you know... Sure. I, it's a funny position to be in, to, to be the person that, you know, for a second could think that John, you know, doesn't, like, oh, I should be there. You know, it's yeah. absolutely John's place to be in that band. So that's why, you know, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he's back with them. And Also, there has to be some element of like so you think the the intent is to do a new record with john yeah i mean i think you know i think that's the thing there's no matter what john and flea specifically had a musical language you know and a connection that was made when yeah. john was 17 you know 18 yeah. flea was i don't even think he was 30 yet you know hillel had just died the band hadn't had any major success you know yeah. it, they're very different people and it's a very different time yeah and when i joined it's 2009 there's it's a different a time yeah, and i yeah. think you know everyone in the band you know i couldn't be more grateful for how open they were to me on so many levels i mean that's why there's that b-sides album for the yeah. first because i brought in a lifetime worth of song ideas and yeah. we went wild we recorded 50 songs and there was a 25 30 more that didn't get finished it was crazy and it was a great they were very open to me very trusting i think there was a lot of you know you know a lot of my work or my writing at the time got sort of pushed aside uh-huh. be sad, you know and and as someone who was trying to write and trying to you know do my part yeah I, I remember it felt a little funny i was sort of like oh okay my i thought i thought i was doing good work yeah. and it's 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 over there you know and uh, yeah, I think everyone, you know, flee the the language that he and I were always trying to. You know, I think he was trying as hard as possible. But you know, you'll never, I'll never be able to to compete or contend with the history that he and John have. You know, and 
Yeah, and that's interesting. So, so, but, but you definitely had you you could read each other on stage. I mean, you knew what was up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, if this had happened five years ago, I think it would have been hard for me just temporally to weigh that against what they had. Yeah. But now, with double that amount of time, ten years, two tours, yeah, and almost three albums of writing, I I'm really proud of what I did with them, and I I feel like we did create something. And we did, you know, and and aside from the music, just on a personal level, with with the guys individually as friends, with everyone in the touring family, every, yeah. you know, I feel like I brought something to the the whole to the sure, you know, every, and you know, I'm really proud of that. Well, that's great, man, yeah. and and it's and not... that, you know, it shows me the growth. I tell you, like I, I know for sure if this happened five years ago, I would you would have just fallen into yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's also it's not acrimonious, and you have things you want to do. Yeah. No, you, I mean, yeah. And you know, you're going to keep all your friends. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Flea, Flea and I had lunch a couple of days after. You know, he said, "This has never happened before. They've never made a." change a member change unless there was a tragedy or or a um uh-huh you know a, just a, a really dark situation or something yeah but you know everything is great i mean I how did they tell you did, did they all sit down with you yeah yeah they i did? came over it was really sweet i rode my bike over because flea's uh living really close to me at the moment yeah and um yeah they just said um you know we're gonna we'll get right to it uh we've decided to ask john to come back to the band and i just sort of sat there quiet for a second and i said I'm not surprised, you know, and I, I guess the only thing I could think to say was I wish I could have done something with you guys musically or creatively that would have made this an absolute impossibility. But then again, like I said, I'm, I'm in, you know, that that's yeah, that's that's next to impossible. Why do you say why do you say that, you know, does, you're not surprised? Cause you, well, just because I had known that John had reached out oh, to oh, okay. um, yeah, Anthony yeah. not too long ago. I, you know, there was just. It crossed my mind. It was so, com- he saw he was on the periphery. Yeah, and you know I hadn't spoken to him, but I saw him at Flea's wedding. He looked, you know, like he was in a really great place. And, yeah. You know, if he's playing guitar again, I think there was a long period where he didn't he didn't have much of a relationship with the guitar. And, really? What yeah, was he I mean, playing? Keyboards? Lots of synthesizers and programming, mm. and he makes you know electronic music, and you know he's he got incredible at doing that. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, from what I had heard from yeah. people, he just. He had sort of put the guitar down for a while. But, but um, it's back. He's back. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I. Uh, well, I'm glad you're okay with it, man. Yeah. No, I. You know, I. I'll have little moments where, at the end of the day, as 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 funny as it could be in that band sometimes, and as, you know, as as difficult as writing was sometimes, uh, you know, there's nothing like. And John said this to me when I joined. He said, "There's nothing like waking up in the morning and coming up with an idea." And going and playing it with your friends in a couple hours, you know, and, yeah. and that's true. There's, you know, I, I, like I said, when I was ten or eleven, I wanted to be in a band. 